So recently, Peter at Staffordshire Custom Blades sent me this. Now, what it was is after he made me that beautiful skinning knife, I was kind of like, um, that's great, but for everyday hunting, your sort of hunting EDC, as it were, you need something a bit smaller, really, when you're shooting rabbits and um, you know pigeon shooting or if you're ferreting or whatever. You, know, you need something that's just a bit more handy. So he made me this. And as you can see, it's more or less a miniaturised version of the Skinner. The uh, width of the blade is about half, I guess, something like that. Owen tool, tool steel. The grind is kind of a... It's quite flat, but we'll come on to that in a minute. The scales, I'm not sure what he actually made these out of. I'm sure um, one of you will be able to sort of tell me. I'm sure Peter can tell me, actually, with red liners. And it, typically, as you can see from him, it is beautifully polished, beautifully made. And this is really nicely designed because it fits your hand perfectly when you're gutting a rabbit. Some of you might have seen on Instagram me doing a video where I'm saying that, you know, if you're small game knife can't go in your hand like this then you know it's no good really unless you could have a gutting hook but for small game you don't really need it to be honest now you know it's great having a folder this is basically the same length as a as an open all but obviously being fixed blade and a full tang it just makes it a lot safer a lot handier really obviously something like this is going to cost you a fair few quid but when you look at it in perspective, once you've got something like this, it's going to last you your whole life. So really, I think it's definitely worth the investment. Because it's like anything, isn't it? You know, you could wander around with a bin bag on, but you don't. You buy nice clothes. Well, if you're going to have something that you're going to use and make use of every single time you go shooting for the next, like, 50 years, then <laughs> why not have something a bit nicer? Which brings me on to this. Because Peter's not a big sheath maker, you know. If you order a knife from, from Peter, if you look on his um, his Facebook uh, page, you'll see he makes all kinds of very cool knives, and he's always looking for input on, on designs and things. That's, as I said, that's one of the reasons why he's got me involved, to get my input. But he's not a big sheath maker, because obviously it takes a lot of um, investment and stuff to get up to speed in terms of making really fine sheaths. It's something you might look at at some point, although he does make very good Kydex sheaths. But generally speaking, you'll get something fairly generic when you order off him. So I contacted Andy at uh, Woodlander Leather, and I got him to make me this. And it is absolutely beautiful. As you can see, it's perfectly moulded to the knife, because I had to send him this. So if you wanted to have a custom sheath made then you know you are going to need to do that because if you've got a knife like this where it's just one of a kind that leather needs to be properly molded so it holds in as you can see it's not that's not coming out and it's you actually have to be quite careful pulling the, the knife out because it's so tight you could easily pull too hard and then yank and then cut yourself i opted for a dangler he actually is, is a big proponent of um, side carry and actually having the uh, the sheath so you're, it's, it's sort of parallel to your belt which is handy as well you know that's all personal preference really but I, I, I am a fan of a dangler just because when it's on your belt you can turn it when you're kneeling down and, and, and pull it out but yeah that's beautifully made and again if you look at his uh, Facebook group um, you'll see he does all kinds of sheaths it, these would this would probably set you back about I don't know, about 50 quid, I think. But, uh, you know, and as I said, this was custom made. But, you know, he does make sheaths for all the main kind of brands. If you've got a EC or a Falcon even or even a Mora or anything like that, you can just buy that straight from his, from his website, you know, if, if that's what you want to do. But with both these guys, as I said, they are just amazing craftsmen. And to get this combination together was well worth the money. I really recommend you pay, pay, pay these guys a visit and give them your input as well because the thing is when you're a knife maker or a sheath maker, you haven't got millions of pounds to spend on R&D. So whilst you may have absolutely have it down in terms of making a really nicely finished, beautiful product that you couldn't buy in a shop, 
in terms of design for a specific purpose, you know, you, you need people's input because you may not have thought of that. You know, in terms of a sheath, you might say, well, I want it with a with a pouch that does this, that, and the other, or I might want a double one, or you know, whatever it is for my personal needs, and then that can then be incorporated into sort of what they're making. And similarly with um, with knives, that sort of Peter makes. Um, the gutting hook, for instance, I got him to make for me recently, which I'll, I'll show him when I do the full review of the Skinner. Um, he hadn't made one of those before, so it was it was an interesting thing for him, but there's a big market for that. Even when we were talking about it on his Facebook group, other guys were going, oh yeah, I could really use one of those. So they always need that input. I mean, and this comes to the one thing that was my one minor crit criticism of this, which I might talk to him about, is the profile of the edge. Because this is like very sharp. I mean, it is, it is shaving sharp. I don't know if you can see that very easily. But it will take off hair. And it is beautifully polished. But the edge is kind of, it's kind of wedge-shaped, which is like the sort of bevel you would get or you would expect to have on a bushcrafty kind of knife, which is brilliant. If you're using this on wood... That's never going to, well, it will eventually, but it's not going to go dull quickly. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to last a really long time. But if you look at it and compare it to, say, my Eka, this has got a much, you'll see, a much, because these are actually, even though, obviously, this is much bigger than this. I think that's focus. The actual metal, in terms of the blade, is about the same width. But when you look at the edges on them, this bevel is about twice the sort of depth that this one is because it's a skinner. So this is like a 40 degree edge um, when I sharpened it. And what it means is, is that with a knife like this, it's really forgiving because when you're cutting, if you're doing a skinning task, you don't have to get a, like a precise angle for to get the optimum cut it'll cut on all kinds of angles, simply because this edge is really steep, which means there's less material here, which means when it cuts, it's got, as I said, it's more forgiving. The disadvantage, though, is if you use this on anything hard, like wood, that bevel's going to roll over. So this has to be a dedicated skinner. You're, you know, you're just going to use this for flesh, basically, which is fine. I mean, that's what it's for. It's, you know, it's, with a gutting hook, it's... That's what it's for, and it, and it works well. But with a knife like this, obviously you don't want you don't want a, a, a bevel quite as steep as that because you want to be able to use this for all kinds of stuff. Is your sort of EDC hunting knife? So you want to maybe make sort of tent pegs for your hide net or, or whatever. So yeah, you don't want a really steep bevel, but maybe a bit steeper than, than this one. So I might chat to him about that, about the best way to do it, because I'm not sure if I'm brave enough to try and reprofile this, because it's such a nice knife, I'll probably ruin it. But it could just do with being somewhere in between, so, you know, it's, it's a bit better for skinning, but at the same time, it maintains a bit of strength. So, yeah. Either way, it's beautifully made. As I said before, that's not any critique of, of, of him at all, it's just a question of preference of what the use is going to be. And, um, you know, I'm sure with, with, with these sheets you could say the same thing. I mean, I know that this, um, Andy doesn't normally tend to do danglers. And, uh, but, you know, I'm just a big fan of that. It's just what I like. So that's what he made for me. But go and visit these guys. Go and have a look and see what you think. And give them some feedback. And, you know, if you're in the market for a really nice knife, you know, go and see Peter. Get him to make you something. He'll make you something completely unique to you, to your needs. And then go and see Andy and get him to make you a beautiful sheath. So, there we are. If you, I hope you enjoyed that. I like quite like making knife videos. You might have gathered by now I'm quite into knives. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's a few things coming up in, in the works over time that I'm going to be doing. I know that um, Peter's actually working on some ex an experimental folder that he wants me to look at at some point. So keep your eyes open for that, because not many knife makers make folders, because it's quite difficult, to be honest. And again, that's the R&D element that I was talking about before, because, you know, when you buy, uh, you, know, you know, something like this, for instance, you know, this is like fairly crude in terms of the workmanship. It's not beautifully polished or anything, but they will have literally spent millions in terms of 
developing that in terms of getting the design down as they wanted it to be. So if you're making a folder and you're a knife maker, you know how to make a folder, but to make one that's so it's just right and it works really well for what you want it to do, that takes a bit of an R&D, which, you know, <laughs> is what I'm going to be doing, basically. So keep your eyes open for that and let me know what you think. You know, if, if, you, know, if you want to see more uh, knife videos, give me a shout. So anyway, it's a rainy weekend, which is why I haven't been out hunting, although I am going to look for a deer tomorrow. So keep your eyes open for that. Keep watching.